Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a rampy version of Arakdos midrange updated with Wilds of Eldraine. I say rampy since we have 8 ways at 2 mana to skip our 3 drop slot and go straight to 4 mana between the Iron Crag, tapping for a Colossus, as well as Charming Scoundrel making a treasure token, as well as a 1 1 with haste. Of course, Scoundrel has a ton more versatility, potentially making us discard and draw into late game to find more action, or we can also generate a wicked roll and put it on one of our creatures to give it plus one plus one, but it's mostly here to enable those turn three four drops, such as of course Shieldred, the boogeyman of standard, still a very powerful card, and has a great synergy in this deck with all our card draw effects, such as a big score, which we could also cast on turn three thanks to that early man acceleration, and then big score can potentially set up some of our planeswalkers on the following turn by generating two extra treasure tokens as well as drawing a few cards, and then we've got a Decadent Dragon, another new addition from Wilds of Eldraine, and this card is awesome, can first use the expensive taste for two and a black, exiling the top two cards of target opponent's library face down, we may look at and play those cards for as long as they remain exiled, so we can potentially play both of those cards, and there's no restriction until end of turn, so we've got the entire game to make use of those cards. Now the only asterisk here is that we may not have the correct colors to cast the opponent's spells, if they're playing white, blue or green, then we don't have the lands to cast them, but we can still count on our treasures, and the dragon itself can generate treasure tokens. A 4-4 flying trample says whenever it attacks, create a treasure token, so that can help in casting the opponent's spells. Plus we could also potentially exile one of their lands, which we can also play from exile to fix our colors. And then we've got plenty more treasures with the scoundrel, big score, and even Chandra's plus 2 ability can add 2 mana in any combination of colors, so it can also help out, and Chandra is great to ramp into with our big score, and then Chandra once in place says whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell we get to copy it and choose new targets for the copy. Only triggers once each turn but can also trigger during the opponent's turn. So maybe in our turn we cast some sorcery that we get to copy and then during the opponent's turn we can use our big score or even the instant speed expensive taste and copy that as well. And copying big score feels great as we get to generate four treasure tokens and to draw four cards after just discarding a single one. And then, of course, we've got two copies of Ashok as well, which was one of the build round cards chosen by my Patreon supporters. This 5 mana Planeswalker also has a passive ability, saying if we would pay life while our library has at least that many cards in it, exile that many cards from the top of our library instead. Don't really have a ton of synergy with Ashok's passive, but we're mainly playing it for the plus 1 and minus 2. The plus 1 says we get to look at the top two cards of our library, exile one of them, and put the other into our hand. So it essentially draws a card among the top two, but it doesn't actually count as card draw, which is good if we're facing an opposing shieldred. If we have our own shieldred on the battlefield, we would prefer actually drawing a card, so we gain two life, so it's a bit of a double-edged sword. And then the minus two creates a pair of 1-1 one, one black nightmare creature tokens, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, if a card was put into exile this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature, so they can keep growing over time if we use Ashok's plus one ability, but even after Ashok is gone, we can still keep growing the nightmares by potentially using some of our adventures, which will also count as a card going to exile, so decadent dragon counts, as well as our virtue of persistence, which is another great new addition from Wilds of Eldraine, can first use the two mana sorcery adventure, Lothwain Scorn, giving a creature minus 3, minus 3 until end of turn, and we also gain 2 life, so especially nice against a red aggro deck. And then if we get to 7 mana, we can cast the Enchantment out of Exile, saying at the beginning of our upkeep, put target creature card from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control. So this card is awesome in those grindier matchups. If your opponent keeps killing cards like Shieldred or Decadent Dragon without exiling them, then we can keep bringing them back and eventually win the game. And then Virtue of Persistence can also synergize with Chan, as we get to copy the sorcery for two mana and then a later still cast the enchantment and Chandra can also help a ramp into the seven mana half of the card using the extra mana mode and of course our treasures from big score can also help cast our virtue of persistence ahead of schedule so as you can see there's a ton of synergy throughout and then Chandra's plus one ability can also help grow the nightmare tokens as we get to exile the top five cards of our library until the end of our next turn we may cast an instant or sorcery spell from among those exiled cards so there's a ton of instants and sorceries we can can find, including our adventures. If we exile a decadent dragon or virtue of persistence, we can also use those adventures using Chandra's ability, and then later still cast the creature half or the enchantment. 
And then we've got a bit of spot removal to round out the deck, two copies of Cut Down, three copies of Go for the Throat, mainly to answer opposing Shieldreds. Could also consider playing Shieldreds Edict as a better answer to opposing Planeswalkers, which we can be a little bit soft to. And then two copies of Gix's Command, which shines against those aggressive creature strategies as a potential board wipe, but also gives us the flexibility of getting creatures back from our graveyard, or potentially putting two plus one counters on up to one target creature, and it gains a lifelink until end of turn. Can also be very important in a racing situation. And then I should also mention the Iron Crank being legendary, so if we draw a second copy we can maybe discard it to a big score, and then once we play a legendary creature like Shieldred, we've got the option of transforming the Iron Crank into a differently named equipment that equips for 3 mana, giving plus 3 plus 3, so at that point we could play another Iron Crank, since they have different names. And then our mana base is one of the disappointing things with Wilds of Eldraine, not giving Red Black a creature land, so that's potentially one of the weaknesses of Red Black going forward, especially in a mid-range build, which would appreciate a creature land, but we still have the Abandoned Mire and Crucible, offering a bit more utility, and plenty of Red Black dual lands for mana fixing. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a nice hand. Iron Crag sets up turn 3, Decadent Dragon. And then if it attacks, we can make an extra mana, hopefully play turn 4 Ashok as well. Put on blue-black, so they could certainly have some relevant interaction. So maybe going double Charming Scoundrel next turn plays around spot removal and or counter spells better. And then by making at least one treasure, we can set up Ashiok on the following turn, which still runs into a potential counter spell, but at least better against spot removal. Yeah, I like that approach. And then I'm fine if they counter Scoundrel, so I'm not going to play land first to play around Make Disappear. Because we still have land for the second one, and I want to bait out Make Disappear if they have it. Perfect. And then now definitely make a treasure. And then hope they don't have a second counter spell for Ashiok. Although we could also decide to use the adventure on our dragon. Yeah, if our opponent's just gonna pass a turn here. Kind of like the instant speed adventure to still use up our mana. And then it might be easier to play around a conditional counterspell next turn if we have more mana available. Question is whether I adventure now. Now let's just do it in the opponent's turn. Does our opponent have some card draw? Fairy Mastermind. That's a good one. Okay, um, I guess I might as well do this now. Swamp and Mirex. Okay, not bad. Can keep hitting my land drops now. Mirex can also fix for blue, in case we end up exiling another blue spell at some point. Now I can maybe double spell Virtue of Persistence, Killing Mastermind, and Decadent Dragon. Opponent's got a shield it, so at least they're tapped out. Don't have a clean answer lined up, unfortunately. But I can resolve Ashiok, and then question is what to do next. I can plus hoping to find removal for Shieldred. If we fail, then we could lose Ashiok. If I make two tokens, we'll still have a three loyalty Ashiok. More blockers for Shieldred. Mastermind puts Ashiok to one, but then next turn we get to use the plus. Unless there's a Shieldred's Edict in hand. So tough call. I think I like Ashok make two tokens. Could also go for Decadent Dragon first. And then just kill Mastermind. And this will give us access to more mana, and if they have removal, they'll probably fire it off. Yeah, that's maybe reasonable too. Doesn't use up any treasures. And this Mastermind could be annoying if we end up drawing a big score. And then now casting 7 mana, Virtue of Persistence, can also be very effective. Mastermind and Scoundrel of the Graveyard. And we could just bring back Decadent Dragon if they destroy it. Of 
I'm fine taking four. Keep Scoundrel to maybe protect my Planeswalker later. And a Kaito can draw. Okay. So I still have to watch out for potential uh, make disappear. So going for Virtue of Persistence doesn't seem optimal. But Ashiok can still pay two. Opponent does have a go for the throat, so now they are tapped out. So now I'm kind of liking Virtue of Persistence. It will resolve. Blue-black shouldn't have an easy time removing it, and then I can keep getting back my dragon. Probably will chump Shieldred, even though Kaito gets to draw a few extra cards. We can reanimate a creature turn after turn. Alternative is Ashok dig for an answer for Shieldred, but again, if we miss, that's pretty bad. So, yeah, let's just get the enchantment in play. Hold Mirix again in case we need it for blue mana later. Reason to play Mirex, I guess, is we could discard a land to a potential big score. Now I'm definitely chumping. Since we might want to save this to get back a Planeswalker, which we cannot get back with our Virtue of Persistence. Yeah, interesting back and forth. I guess there is the blue channel land that could bounce our enchantment, but they don't have it. And yeah, gets our dragon back. Can help us pressure Kaito. Fall to 10. Back up Iron Crag, not super useful. So now might be time to play Ashiok. Can pay for a make disappear with casualty. And then now I think we plus, gotta find answers to shield it. At least we don't actually draw with a plus one, it's exiling and then putting in hand. So it doesn't drain us with Shieldred. And this we can adventure. And I've made a mistake I've made before, which is clicking on the card that I want to put in hand, but it ends up getting exiled. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Well, I guess we can think about channeling Abandoned Mire. Sashok takes five. Not dead yet. <laughs> what a Kaido draws. There's no secret I can't and hope to mill some exciting creatures here. Possible they would have been able to counter the adventure on our dragon anyways, so maybe this actually works out to be better. Yeah, so shield root I can leave in the graveyard to get back with Virtue of Persistence and then Chandra in hand. Kaito not too far from ultimating either. Problem now is that our opponent can pretty easily cast a Make Disappear with Casualty, sacking the Might. So I still need this for mana. Take our draw. They cancel each other out. Plus. Okay, let's exile the land, keep the scoundrel. And then I can play Chandra. And yeah, if they have a make the spear with casualty, they'll still be able to counter. But so it goes. Chandra resolves. That's huge. So, probably just minus five, killing shield roots and damaging Kaito. Even though I lose my Chandra that way, Pun probably has a bank of shield root in hand, given that they have been holding a few cards for a while. But now I can play a Scoundrel potentially with haste to finish off Kaito. And we're winning the long game with Virtue of Persistence. Soaring City bouncing their own shield roots, alright. So their one potential answer to bounce Virtue of Persistence is gone. 
And then now I can discard draw without taking damage. In fact, gaining life. And then go for the throat, answers shielded. Okay. Well, after misclicking with Ashiok, we're still in decent shape, I think. Opponent's got a pretty big life total advantage, but now their card draw engine is gone. And this Virtue of Persistence is going to keep persisting. It's going to persist all over the opponents. Second Kaito also makes sense. And then we'll likely take out Shieldred before our regular draw step. In the graveyards can get back Decadent, Dragon perhaps. It is possible that our opponent's playing a card like Breach the Multiverse. That could still save them if it uh, gets back my Chandra. Can also start activating Mirex. Big score's nice. Plus Ashok. And I'll exile cut down key big score. Probably fine to keep Mirex untapped. Can play another decadent dragon. Or we can use the adventure first, which I kind of like. Let's just do it now. And now a counter spell can potentially deal with an opposing Breach the Multiverse. We've got the treasures to cast it. So yeah, I think we're in the driver's seat. Another shield root. Yeah, I can counter with casualty, but I think it's still beatable. Whereas Breach the Multiverse, I'm still kind of nervous about. How many go for the throats do we have left? Still quite a few. Evolved Sleeper, sure. It's gonna take them a while to level up. And then I can maybe grab the opponent's Fairy Mastermind to punish the additional card draw from Kaito. And then we'll take our draw step. Cut down also answers Evolved Sleeper. 32 cards remaining, so decking's not really a concern in case they're playing Jace. Open your mind. Okay, so start with a big score, discard Iron Crag. Not the best set of draws. And then we can attack with a dragon at Kaito. In fact, I can probably just cut down the Evolved Sleeper attack with everyone to guarantee taking it out. Possible they just block Scoundrel, let Kaito go, and then threaten to take out Ashok with Shieldred. That's maybe their best bet. But it's not even gonna bother. Play a dragon and pass. Yeah, this Virtue of Persistence definitely delivered. Possible opponents got their own. Another Kaito, that's fine. With a Fairy Master Mind, that's actually doing us a favor. I won't let Kamigawa fail my family again. <laughs> There's no secret I so yeah, you might look at this state and think, what if you just counter Childred? Wouldn't you have won the game by now? Maybe, but it's still good to think about how you actually lose the game. And even though we're not, you know, ending the game right now, we're, uh, Definitely in the driver's seat. And now with the MIG Disappear available, a lot less likely to randomly lose to a 7 mana sorcery. Evolved Sleeper's fine. 
can maybe work our way up towards an Ashiok ultimate. Could be fun. And an opposing Evolt Sleeper sounds good. A nice mana sink. Bonus not giving up, which also kind of implies that they might have one of those heavy hitters. Alright, don't uh, get to mess this one up. We'll just go for the throat shield roots. And that uh, might prompt a concession now. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Shield Root was the only thing keeping them in the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn 2 Scoundrel can set up a turn 3 Dragon if the matchup calls for it. And against a red aggro deck, maybe even a turn 3 Shield Root could be quite nice. Virtue of Persistence can also gain us some life back. And against this double Swiss Spear opening, there's definitely an argument for just casting Virtue of Persistence here. Take out a Swiss Spear. Although my next turn would not be incredibly exciting. So I think we still Scoundrel. Which can maybe trade for Epicure. And then we can curve 4-drop into another 4-drop. Opponent's going to play with fire to kill Scoundrel. Take seven. Okay, so I think still go for Shield Root, and then next turn we can maybe big score to gain some life and cast the Virtue of Persistence. Hope that I don't have a leftover removal spell. Should be safe enough to block an Epicure. And then one, two, three, four, five. If her opponent has a lightning strike, that's plus five, so it would be dead. If they have another play with fire, then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if they have play with fire, I should block at least a swift spear. Uh, in the case of lightning strike, we would be dead. So yeah, I guess blocking swift spear makes sense. And Lightning Strike kills us. Yeah, that's too bad. We were very close to stabilizing here. Next turn, we can uh, big score, gain some life, Virtue, and take over. But opponent was just fast enough here on the play. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Missing that two-man acceleration, but we've got some interaction to make up for it. And then big score into Chandra is looking good. A red aggro once again. Probably gonna just cut down the Phoenix Chick. Can still at some point play Chandra plus for mana and then copy go for the throat. Second main Felden, don't see that every day. Alright, now we get to Iron Crank and still go for the throat. And then would love to hang on to my second big score. Might struggle to deal with Chandra. Yep. I'm a by now. Since I'm not packing Shieldra's Edict. Although now Decadent Dragon's not a bad solution. Assuming it survives. Opponent would need two burn spells to finish it off. Or we can go big score, discard maybe the Dragon. And then I'm guaranteed to play Chandra on the following turn. If I hit two lands in the meantime, maybe even Chandra into big score, which would be awesome. Close call. Chandra also an answer to the three mana Chandra, I suppose. Yeah, if I go Decadent Dragon and they kill it, that would be pretty bad. They haven't had a great chance to use their burn spells yet. Uh, let's try this. A land Chandra, that works. So now if I draw a land... We could still go Chandra into big score, copied, which replaces itself in terms of mana, and then draws four cards. 
If we don't draw land, then Chandra minus killing some stuff is probably good enough. Pitfighter discarding a second Chandra address to kill. And a Mishra's Foundry creature lands can be pretty effective. If we don't find a blocker, sadly our land enters tamped. So it's not the best here. Hmm. So yeah, if I go for Chandra minus five, there's only one target. So we don't get the most out of it. If I just go Chandra plus up to seven between Foundry, the plus one counter, the damage to Planeswalkers, they're somewhat likely to finish it off. And then I'm going to be a mana short of Chandra into big score. Yeah, I think we still Chandra and then I can maybe plus one and find some other interaction. Cut down and go for the throat. That counts. Can even copy it. So if they present two creatures, that would be lovely. Mishra's Foundry, just a Foundry. Let's cut it down. And then we might see two burn spells finish off our Chandra, Kami's Flare. So and play with fire. Alright, still get to play another Chandra here. This one's at 6, ultimate is minus 7. So we still have a little bit of time left. Now a Decadent Dragon seems like the play. Because then next turn if I get to make a treasure... Let's see, I guess we're still a little bit short of the play of Chandra into Big Score, which I keep wanting to make happen. Could also Adventure Decadent Dragon, and then if I hit a land I can still cast it. That may be worth it. And then if we don't find a land we likely find something else useful. Okay, a land and Phoenix Chick, I'll just play land and Dragon. Kumana transforms, we're still at 14, so yeah, the main concern is just Chandra ultimating. And uh, I'm gonna take it. I'm a coward. Ooh, the Thundering Raichu would have been nice, first main phase. So yeah, now we can attack with Decadent Dragon, make a treasure, and then if I were to play Chandra, I could add two mana, still big score, discarding Haunted Ridge. Or I could just minus killing Chandra Dress to Kill and Thundering Raiju, which is definitely the safer play, not quite as sweet. I'm still tempted to plus here, actually. Land lands. Land Ashok. Okay, so I can still play Ashok at the very least, and then make some tokens. Does a plus deal damage to each Planeswalker, up to one target player or Planeswalker. And the festivities would definitely hurt here. Ooh, Battalion for five mana. That's three hasty 2-2s two with Trample. That's certainly unexpected. So I'll have to make a couple of blocks at least. One on Raiju. These all Trample. So this has me taking... 7 down to 3. Hope to find a shield red, I guess. Another Iron Crag. So, how do we sequence? Making two tokens doesn't seem all that helpful when all these have trample. So we'll start by plussing. Find a shield red, so let's exile Scoundrel. And then Chandra could... Minus killing, let's say, Thundering Raiju and their Chandra. 
potentially using Phoenix Chick as well for one extra point. Opponent also has a Phoenix Chick in the graveyard that they can return next turn if they attack with everyone. So I feel like the line of Shield Roots kill their Chandra and one of their creatures is still going to leave me dead. So instead, I think I might have to get lucky and find another big score here with Chandra's plus one to combine with Shield Roots and gain some life back. Oof, Gix's command, that'll certainly do it too. So play Shield Roots. Now I can transform the Iron Crag, since we have another one. And then Gix's command. Destroying their small creatures. And then two plus one counters and lifelink. Copied. And then second Gix's command chooses the same modes. I'll grow Decadent Dragon once again. And that does it. Awesome. Very close game here against a more mid rangey variant of Mono Red Aggro. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems fine. Just need to find a black source to cast turn 3 Shieldred. But in the meantime, we've got Cut Down and the Iron Crag. Okay. Against Blue Black, don't expect my Shieldred to stick around for long. And they might counter the Iron Crag. Not sure if our opponent's on a Fairy deck or just kind of Blue Black mid range. Still playing the draw go game. Well, this will probably require some answer. Still decline here since we want to get up to six mana for Chandra. And a Shieldred's Edict is pretty fitting here. Okay, we'll try again next turn. Big score is nice too, but better once we deploy Chandra. And does her opponent answer Shieldred number two? Just a fading hope. That's not too bad. And our opponent's got their own Shieldred's. Okay. Pretty good against us, but we can at the very least kill it with Chandra. So that's an option, just minus five, kill a shieldred, deal five to the opponent. Would be better if our opponent has two things I can kill with it. Or we can just play our own shieldred again. I would be a little short of channeling Abandoned Mire to get back other shieldred. So yeah, a bit of an awkward spot for sure. I guess Chandra can also be returned with Abandoned Mire. So maybe that's just a play. Still kind of feels bad to just kill Shieldred and nothing else. But if I play Shieldred, they kill it and have a counter spell, that would be a disaster. Time to light up the darkness. No, this isn't happening when I say burn, you burn. And then if I do draw lands, I could play Shield Roots and channel Abandoned Mire. Still gonna decline, I think. It's gonna be Virtue of Persistence, maybe times two. And if they get to seven mana, that could be quite powerful. And Drown an Icker instead. Alright, let's channel. And yeah, I think I like Chandra over Shieldred, but it's a close call. So I can play Chandra. And then yeah, if we add two mana, I can still big score, discarding cutdown, and draw a ton of cards. Okay, and then we can cast our own Virtue of Persistence next turn. Ashiok Wicked Manipulator we can probably take out with Chandra. If 
This is where having a creature land would come in handy. And we found another Chandra. Okay, so just gonna minus six here, I think. Seems safe enough. There's no targets for the two mana half of Virtue. So it can only cast a seven mana one. And then we were actually pretty close to just winning right now with uh, Chandra number two dealing five damage. Could also channel Crucible to get in for two, which at this point might be all right. So we're about to get back. Shieldreds. Opponent's got another Ashiok. Some expensive cards in exile. Open your mind to me. Probably best to get back my own Shieldred in case they bounce it. Can transform Iron Crag. So this is now an equipment. Can suit up the 1-1, one, one, attack for 5, and then play another Chandra after maybe minusing the first one. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's a little slow to get going. No 2 or 3 drops. But uh, yeah, shield it into some powerful fives if we can hit our land drops. I think I'm still going to try it. On the draw, I probably would have mulliganed on the play. It's not too bad. And of course, Gix's Command, also a good way to catch back up if we're up against an aggressive deck. Turn one Kumano, points in that direction, and so there we go, Iron Crag. Probably our best draw here. Setting up a turn three, shield it. PNLR has some nice synergies in red-white, generating extra 1-1 one -one Thopters. Luckily, we've got a Gixxus Command to clean those up. And I will decline for now. White could, of course, have some clean answers to Shieldred, unlike most red decks, which can struggle with 5 toughness. And there we see the adventure creatures, also enabling Pia. Think we'll clean things up with Gix's command here. So destroy power two or less, and each opponent sacrifices highest power. And get in for four. The plus one plus one counters on lifelink were also pretty tempting here. Okay, opponent with a hearth elemental to draw two cards. Also triggers shieldred as it turns out, opponent down to six. And then they should just be dead to Gix's command, kill Pia, two plus one counters on a shieldred. And there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Cut down into Scoundrel, can set up a big score, ramping out Chandra. And then uh, if we can somehow hold on to big score until after Chandra, even better, but I doubt it. Well, let's see where our opponent's up to. Turn one mountain. And a Phoenix chick. Let's just cut that down. Make a treasure, and I think I do attack. Most of their haste creatures would be large enough to attack past Scoundrel anyway. Double Epic here. And we'll play a land and pass. 
And then Big Score sets up Chandra next turn. Opponent finds a Swiss Spear. Luckily, no mana to get back Phoenix Chick. So we'll take two. Now, next turn, if I Chandra minus two to kill Swiss Spear Epicure, it would be within range of a burn spell like uh, a Lightning Strike. Taking it out here. So instead what I could do is play Chandra, plus for mana, play Scoundrel. And then hope to untap with a higher loyalty Chandra. If not, we still have a backup. And then Scoundrel could either be a 1-1 one -one making a treasure, making it easier to cast second Chandra. Or maybe get the Wicked Roll so it blocks a 1-1 one -one profitably. Although can imagine our opponent will have some removal. Close call. I think maybe just killing the two creatures is best. And then if our opponent spends a turn killing Chandra, hopefully not with like a squee, that would be bad. But if they use a lightning strike, then next turn I can double scoundrel and play another Chandra. Because if I do end up going for plus and then scoundrel, and they have, let's say, one damage to all my creatures and planeswalkers, they could also easily end up killing Chandra without us actually making any progress. So this feels like the safest line. We've lost to but I imagine I'll be able to answer Chandra. Swiss Spear plus Impulse, that's still only 2 damage. But now Kumano is another prowess. Yeah, that's effective. Virtue is nice. So Scoundrel make treasure. Virtue kill Swiss Spear. Could also wait until I copy the Scorn with Chandra, killing two creatures, which our opponent may or may not present. And by making two treasures, I can guarantee six mana next turn, and then Chandra pluses plays Virtue. Kind of like that idea, actually. There is a chance that our opponent doesn't present another creature. I don't really want to trade the Scoundrels when I'm about to take out two of their creatures. But we'll see. Opponent just goes digging. Of course, next turn they'll transform Kumano and get another creature. And then for now, double block just runs into Lightning Strike, enabling Prowess. So I could either single block or take it. Yeah, I guess I'll save myself two damage. So sadly don't have two targets for our Scorn, so I could wait another turn for the Chandra into minus three, minus three. So hopefully we'll draw something else we can cast that doesn't use my treasures. Iron Crag, I guess, counts. Could, of course, also play Chandra, play Iron Crag. But I would hate to run into a situation where they actually finish off Chandra somehow. Although she will be at 7 loyalty. So, with a blocker, that's not that easy, although not impossible. Yeah, let's just play it safe. I think if we can go Chandra, kill two creatures, gain four life, we'll be in great shape. And then Chandra makes it easier to play the 7 mana enchantment. Another Kumano also could have damaged the Planeswalker. So now maybe incentivized to take it to keep my Scoundrel to protect Chandra from future haste creatures. Although the Swiss Spear is likely dealing 3 plus damage this turn. And I would hate to just die if they go Lightning Strike play with fire. 5 damage. Plus another 6, yeah, that would be 11 exactly. Alright, it's go time. Play Chandra. There's no real window for them to take out Chandra before I get to cast a spell. Since we'll go immediately up to 7 loyalty, which is going to be too much for the burn deck.
Now what they could potentially do is kill their own creature so that I don't get the seven mana enchantment half of the card. And they would also deny the two life gained. So yeah, actually if they have a play with fire, they're probably gonna take out their own etching. So I should have targeted Swiss Spear with a real Virtue of Persistence instead of the other way around. But yeah, opponent doesn't go for it or doesn't have it. And now we've got a 7 loyalty Chandra and a Virtue that we can cast. Opponent passes. Ashiok also excellent here. So play Ashiok, use a minus 2 and then Chandra Exiling top five cards will also grow the nightmares. And a big score is going to be great next turn. We're at 13. Let's see if our opponent can burn us out. Play with fire. So yeah, if they had it in hand, I think they should have probably just killed their own creature. Because they deny two life gain, which is the same as dealing two to our face. I guess they don't get to scry then. But uh, yeah, Virtue of Persistence could definitely be relevant in this match. But it's got two more cards in hand and Shield Root's going to be the final nail. Alright, so let's make sure we sequence optimally. Probably fine to make two more tokens. And then add two mana. And then I can play Shield Roots. I guess, hmm, never mind. I don't have two cards to discard to Big Scores. So I can actually cast it with Shield Root in play. So that's a bit of an oopsie. Yeah, still play Shield Roots. How bad can it be? And then I can transform Iron Crag. Equipping. Probably just shield roots, and yeah, that's too much for the opponent to handle. So yeah, this uh, worked out nicely. I guess what I could have done instead of making two more tokens with Ashok is just uh, use the plus to essentially draw a card, and then I can actually go shield root into big score, since I'll have an extra card in hand to discard, so that would have been the ideal play, I think. Alright, so we got to see our Rampy Rakdos midrange deck in action, and there were certainly a few cards from Wilds of Eldrain that impressed me. Decadent Dragon being the main one, getting to generate card advantage with the adventure, and then a very solid creature even if you skip the adventure and just cast the 4-4 flyer. And then of course the Iron Crank giving us that early mana acceleration has been great so far. Virtue of Persistence can be a bit hit or miss if the removal spell doesn't line up in the matchup. Then the 7 mana enchantment may not be all that exciting or vice versa. But if you get use out of both modes it's an amazing card for sure. Ashiok on the other hand still has to prove itself to me as a card draw engine. It feels a little slow, doesn't have that immediate removal effect that you expect to see on a lot of planeswalkers. So it's not always the best at stabilizing you when facing let's say an opposing shield root. So Ashok I can easily see leaving out of this build, which is unfortunate since it was sort of the build around when starting out. But uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.